Well, it's Tuesday again. Right. <laughs> We've been doing uh, scales and gauges for two weeks. Uh-huh. And uh, we're still doing the ever-shrinking scales and gauges. Right. We left off with N scale mm -hmm. or triple O. Okay. But mostly just N scale. And uh, another even smaller scale came out uh, just 10 years later. In 62, uh, Arnold came out with N scale. And just 10 years later, uh, Marklin, the famous Marklin that pretty much invented model railroading, came out with Z scale. Oh my goodness. Which should probably more appropriately be called Z scale. Z scale. Just because most of the world pronounces Z Z, and certainly the Germans do. So since it's their scale, should, should we call it Z or should we call it Z? Wow. Potato or potato <laughs> or envelope we'll or envelope? <laughs> Everyone in the United States calls it Z, so we'll just call it Z. Oh, okay. But they would call it Z, and a lot of people will call it Z. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's just that much smaller. Again, it's about a third smaller than N. It's one two hundred and twentieth scale. We're getting down Pretty right small. tiny. It runs on a six point five millimeter gauge track. Wow. As ah. opposed to the nine millimeter gauge of N scale. One of the fun things about Z scale is you can then make that into a narrow gauge train and there's some offerings where people use that size track to make NN3. Mm. So it's 160th scale American prototype running on the 6.5 millimeter track to create a three foot gauge narrow gauge in that teeny oh tiny, gosh. tiny, teeny tiny scale. Wow. And they run? Quite nicely, too. I haven't too. seen one at a train show yet. Well, we saw one, but the, it wasn't working. Oh. He had some problems. I see. With it. Yeah. But we've seen uh, we've seen uh, uh, some Z scale. Mm -hmm. Just and, and there's like a little fold out open. Yeah, I was gonna thing. say a little it's like, suitcase. Just like a little suitcase and because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the whole railroad is. That'd be my size. Yeah, it's just teeny. <laughs> Take it with you wherever you go. And so you can you can pack a lot into a very 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 small space mm -hmm. with Marklin's Z scale. Wow. But if that isn't strange enough, then in 2006 a Japanese company came out with T scale. Well, there you go. That is T. 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 Yeah. T yeah. Tiny. So not to be confused with T. T. Uh -huh. Which is too tiny. This is just tiny T. Yeah. And it uh, oddly enough, they've done a couple of different scales that all run on the same track. It's a three millimeter track. That's like so sort of a zip tie. That's one third the size of N. Yeah. Track. Yeah. One third the size of and you see these things and they're just how teeny tiny teeny tiny do we go here? And it's a, a lot of it is of course Japanese prototype well, because it was a Japanese company. Yeah. But also a, a fair amount of European prototype. Mm. I don't know that I've seen any American prototype in T, but it probably exists. You can't find it. That's how I ended up with this guy, I think. I was uh, pretty close. I was looking for the world's <laughs> smallest train. Well, well, and, and it's like, can they go any smaller than T? Give me a possible? minute. <laughs> well, the screwy thing is, yeah, they have. They, there's these people out there doing, uh, Z is, uh, uh, or T is the smallest commercially available, but there are people out there making even tinier trains. <laughs> there's a, a line of trains that you can buy that are this size. That yeah, run. that run. So they're dollhouse size. So you do an O scale railroad in a 112 scale dollhouse. So you put up your dollhouse Christmas tree and you put the little O scale train that goes around in, let's see, what would uh, 48 times 12 be? Oh boy. Where's the paper and a pencil and the calculator oh, and an abacus and... 550 is 600 scale, somewhere right in there. And they run and they run. In fairness, they don't have motors in the train. No. They have magnet, magnetic Underneath. fields that run around the track and it just sort of pulls the train along. Right. 
but some of these and then some of these nano uh, scales are just they're just so but they they can't fit a motor in there you, uh, give them a couple of years and they will yeah somebody will be down there with their uh -huh. microscope building yeah, it no kidding i saw a picture uh i'm gonna i'll put it here in the show it's a picture of a guitar see nanotechnologies because the the people who build microchips and stuff Mm -hmm. That's all. That's what that is, right? Nanotechnology. Been fitting. there, done that. <laughs> See, you made those for a while. Yeah, yeah. wafers. <laughs> but if you're going to fit six million transistors in a in a wafer in a chip that's that's that big, you yeah. know, uh, so pretty small. Some there's the nano laboratory at Cornell, and they decided to build a playable electric guitar. Okay, it doesn't really run on electric, but it, it looks like an electric guitar. Yeah. Here's a picture of it. Oh wow. It would fit, you could fit that easily inside a red blood cell. You can't see it. It's way too small to see. You need an electron microscope to see it. The strings are 100 atoms wide. Wow. And it's playable. By whom? Well, that's the weird thing. It's like, what are you going to get in there and pluck it? So I had to find out how the heck do you play it? Well, you shoot the string with a laser, oh. and that heats the laser at that one tiny spot and makes it go doink, and it oscillates. Uh, it's a little tricky to tune, but it oscillates at, I think, what they say, 60 gigahertz, something like that. Wow. Just think how many you or can 60 get megahertz. Christmas time. It, 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 Tell somebody 60 you got a guitar. Megahertz, yeah. There it is with this little tiny guitar. Yeah. Now get out your jeweler's label. Get out a mic. You need an, and it can't even be a regular microscope. It has to be an electron microscope because it's a hundred atoms across the string. Wow. And then you, you figure out how to aim your laser at the string and you go, dink, and it goes, dink. You'll never hear it because at 60 megahertz, no, it's that's like the frequency of your microwave oven or something. I can hear that. So how how small can you go? The, the question starts to become, at what point has it gone too far? This is, this is fun. N is fun. Yeah. And, uh, but when it starts getting much smaller than that, I mean, just because you can doesn't mean you should. It's easy to misplace something like that, too. I, I digress for a second, but I had a cop explain that to me. Because I was driving along in the Mustang, and he said, what's your hurry? And I said, I, this car can go 140 miles an hour. And he said, just because you can doesn't mean you should. That's true about a lot of things. So that's true could, about a I lot will, of but things. I can't, so I won't. So, yeah, you can go smaller than this, but just because you can doesn't mean you should. At some point in time, it sort of takes the fun out of the model railroading if you can't see the train. Well, I built a model in a Sucrete spark. <laughs> you it, did? It just, it couldn't go, though. That, I, I'm still trying to figure out how to make the train go. But it's there. It's there. And you can yeah, see it. Yeah, it's a static display. It's, yeah, for now. Yeah, and for it's kind of like your little dollhouse train oh, it's set here. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's smaller, smaller than that. smaller than that. that. It's but, in the Sucrete's box. You know, a locomotive is uh -huh. so big or something. Yeah, yeah. And you carve those trains out of... Uh, pencil no, lens. no, no. Well, those are those, are those were ones. other ones. Those were bigger those ones. Those were bigger, but the other but one you was take a pencil box. lead and you carve oh, the, yeah, the train just, out of a yeah. pencil lead. Yeah. Like I said, I've tried. I mean, I, I got to give me an E for effort here. <laughs> one of these days, I will do it too. <laughs> we'll keep posted. We we'll keep we'll keep you posted on that. Anyway, smaller and smaller and smaller. But I, I again, not to to hammer home the point. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And just because the technology has allowed us to go from number one gauge to zero gauge to HO scale to S scale to N scale to Z scale to T scale. Can you imagine having a train set in your watch? Could be done. Hey, Apple. Yeah. Apple Watch, you can put a train right in there and they've yeah. got this little layout you can play with. Take it on the road with you. Sure. We're going to do operations now. Yeah. <laughs> Just because you can doesn't mean you should. And I think this is this is about the point where it sort of crosses over into the 
just you because don't you don't want to lose it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> this is some fun operating, and this is some fun model building, and it's especially some fun operating. You want to see what you can do. <clears throat> but, you know, you want to yeah, enjoy you, what you're doing. You, the, you know, sometimes it's fun to just say, look how small I made this. But if you really mm -hmm. want to do model railroading, and you really want to run trains around, this is probably... Exactly. You don't want to go into Walmart with a little lantern sticking off your elbow. Yep. Like I did. <laughs> what what, what oh, happened hey. here? Oh, my lantern got stuck. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know it was even there. <laughs> Somebody had to point it out. <laughs> That's a nice place for an earring, but I yeah. want to put it in your ear instead of on your elbow. <sighs> oh, fun. Mm -hmm. Oh, fun. Anyway, I think we finally have taken model railroading to a small as we ever want to go uh, for purposes of our little series here on scales and gauges. So meanwhile, back <clears> out <throat> on the garden railroad where we can see what we're doing. Yeah, 120 is scale. There's a reason why I've gravitated toward bigger and bigger trains instead of smaller and smaller trains because when this was my railroad, I had a steady hand and I could see real well. Mm -hmm. That was then. This is now. Right. And the, with the reality of the situation being the reality of the situation, you hit a certain point in age, and just as the technology lets the trains get smaller and smaller and smaller, your bifocals get the, thicker, the, and thicker, the, and thicker. The, yeah, the bifocals make the trains. <laughs> Out of sheer uh, uh, necessity, the trains get bigger and bigger. Well, and bigger. Matt, we don't mow the grass as often as we should, so something like that will get lost. Yeah, yeah. This this would be challenging in the garden. Uh, I bet you could do it, but I wouldn't. Uh, I'm not going to be the no, one to do it. No. Not here. Not here. Anyway, uh, if if you wanted to help the channel out financially, you could become a member, right? And that costs five bucks. Anyway, if you're not a subscriber to the channel, do subscribe to the channel, and you can do that by clicking on the upcoming mm. blue button. Are we ready? <laughs> The blue button. Well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we'll see you here on Sunday. We'll see ya. See ya. Bye. Bye bye.